Joe. Okay, we just discovered why Scrum is very important and, and also how the name is relevant here. Tell us about it. Three points about pairing. Okay, so, so Scrum is a, a move in rugby where the whole team links arms and push in the same direction. And they actually even link necks with the opposite team. It, it, it's, a, it's a particular move. But the idea is you have everybody pushing in the same direction together. So scrum pairing, which has actually even evolved further in extreme programming, enables a redundancy of talent. Um, it enables an all hands on deck movement where everyone has at least an essential level of skill with any operation. So if you have an all hands on deck, everyone can pitch in. It reduces downtime because if you have the videographer and right now it's not appropriate to be videoing, they can then be welding, for example. And they might not be the best welder, but they can be welding. They have other talents, so they can be continually moving the ball down the field. Uh -huh. um, and then you achieve, you have the opportunity to achieve self-transcendence, where the team feels fully empowered to do anything required to get the task done towards the vision. And that level of hyper-velocity, a self-transcendence team, is very difficult, if not impossible, without a, without a cross-functional team. Uh -huh. and I think there was one more we missed. Uh, one, oh, we right. Three points. There, it, was, it was your point about the videographer's skill in proving sure. because they know right. what a nut and bolt is. Yeah, so if you have two very dissimilar tasks happening at the same time, so somebody is wrenching on something and then you have, let's say, the documentation of it, if the person doing the documentation doesn't understand the difference between the nut and the bolt or some other piece of hardware, then they're not going to be as uh, effective of capturing what needs to be captured, the actual assembly of the parts. Mm -hmm. So they might be over here like, oh, look, there's a butterfly. You know, we should, we should put that in because it's creative. You know, it'll make it look pretty. But, uh -huh. you know, focusing on what is the important part. So having the videographer having had a chance to, to assemble parts, and it's like, oh, what is this, a nut? This is a bolt, okay, they go together. Well, cool. Okay. So now when you tell me in the, in the assembly process that, Okay, next we, we take bolt A and nut B and we put it together. He'll be filming exactly what okay. needs to be filmed. And right. that nut and bolt so person being filmed now has a better idea of how to present that information so that it's clear. So the next time they're being filmed, they can present that better. Or the next time they're training someone or pairing with someone and sharing that task, they have a better idea about how to do that motion where it's more clear because they've now been part of that training process yeah. or that recording process too. So we have depth of skill increase through cross-functionality. Okay, so basically to summarize, the paradox of pairing is that two people put to the same task actually end up doing better? More work than either would have done individually at the same time. Two people working on one thing will be able to move faster and produce more completed work than those same two people working on their own which is completely counterintuitive, but it's been statistically bared out by pairing studies. Uh -huh. And the benefits, once again, being cross-functionality to minimize downtime, ability to swarm, and what's the third one? Uh, deeper knowledge of their own skill, because they have more understanding and more uh, hands-on ability with how it relates to the rest of the project. Okay. Thank you.